we're in the UHN Stabilization and Connection Center, and I think what this has really been about is the story of partnership and how we can deliver preferential uh, care and options for people who have either been shut out of the system, uh, have alcohol intoxication, and are not requiring urgent medical care or acute medical care, uh, but end up having to wait seven or eight hours with paramedics. Uh, and again, in, in environments and settings that don't have the capacity and bandwidth to try to bring uh, preferential options, and this happening in partnership with staff and workers that people trust. The reality now is we can't disconnect the shelter and housing crisis from the hospital bed crisis, and there's not capacity in the hospital system. And so we've seen the real value and incredible skills uh, and virtues of peer workers in our emergency department over the last few years. A big piece on this is the C and the care part, the connection part. Um, they can really get connected to other services beyond the food and care that's here or access to the showers, they actually get connected to the social supports and services, that are, whether it's call auntie and other um, community supports that are in place. We also know, I think really importantly from the data, we're seeing code zeros of where there's not enough ambulances out on the roads to get uh, people access to care they need when there's real acute emergencies and acute care that's needed. Uh, the usual wait is five to seven hours uh, for paramedics with someone who has, been al has alcohol intoxication. We're now seeing in the last 10 uh, patient visits that have been able to be dropped off an in and out time uh, for the ambulance staff, uh, ambulance paramedics, uh, about eight minutes. So less than 10 minutes to have that happen and they're able to go back out. So really it's about addressing these system inefficiencies and these system inequities about this center being a preferential option for people.